Hi guys, a quick video showing 10 things I done to my Mac that improved my productivity so much and I promise you're gonna love this. Tip number one, trackpad. Within the accessibility settings, uh, if you go to the pointer control, I've had my double click speed set at like lightning quick like that. So for example, if I double click here, you see that doesn't register. That's because it's expecting me to click on like a supersonic speed. So if that happens to you, make sure you reduce that all the way down. So now when you double click, it registers that as double click. So let's see one more time, put that super high supersonic double click. It doesn't register. So if you do ever run into the issue, that would fix it for you. This video is all about improving your productivity. So the second thing I want to show you is the hot corners. For those of you that don't know, you can configure all four corners of your screen to trigger an action, right? So for example, if you go into your settings one more time and then come onto your dock options and scroll all the way down and within dock, you got hot corners. So if you click on that, you can see Within the four areas, you can trigger an action. So by default, you got quick note. That's why it does that. So if you ever want the quick note to be turned off, you can just go and leave it to the dash and then it doesn't work. You see now it doesn't work. But for me, what I do is I leave the quick note for, for you know, whenever I want the quick note, I leave the quick note, but I also do a few things. You see, old habits die hard and, you know, I used to use Windows for a long time before I moved on to Mac and I want to access my desktop quite quickly all the time. So I will go with desktop. And then also what I do is sometimes when it, when, I met, when I want to see a notification quickly, I can just move my mouse to the top right hand corner to trigger the notification. So typically you click to trigger. Now I'm just want, okay, now I just want to move my mouse there. You see that triggers the notification. I'll move it this way to trigger my quick notes or come to the desktop pretty quickly. And I think that's super powerful when you are when you don't have another screen and you're using a single screen and you just want to move around quickly, you want to check your messages quickly, that's really cool. Obviously, you've got the mouse shortcuts to bring in your notifications. So if you think it's a bit of an overkill, you can go and switch that off. The third thing I want to show you is the text replacement. This is going to blow your mind. Some of these features already existed within iPhone and if you're used to the ecosystem, you will know what I'm talking about. Just come onto your keyboard, right? And you will have the text input section. Go to text replacement and you can see I've already done some presets, right? So in order to not accidentally trigger it, I put a wildcard at the front. So my wildcard is the hyphen. So for example, hyphen address, hyphen email and hi. So what that basically does is in my example in here. So if I come on to Let's go through this one more time. So if I go um, the hyphen or dash address, you see that brings an address. So if you're typing an address in like forms and in fields and you're getting sick and tired of moving things, uh, typing them every single time, that is a quick way of doing it. So one thing I get sick and tired of is actually typing my email every single time, especially when you have to write an email and then you have to reconfirm the email. So I just use my shortcut now that brings up my email. You know, sometimes you have to email somebody and you put hi, I hope you're well. And and you might not, you might not really mean it. What I've done is I just put hi now, you know, it just puts hi, how are you? So you can just put hi and then just continue writing. So take advantage of that. That in terms of productivity, that's also another thing that's gonna help you massively. The fourth thing I wanna show you is a spotlight searches. This is a search function that pretty much searches your entire operating system for the things that you want to search. So you'd normally trigger that by command and search bar, or you can go to the top of the search button to trigger the spotlight search. But what the spotlight search does is, if you're searching for, let's say for example, flowers, it's gonna start looking for a few things and it's gonna it's gonna look at everything, including the apps that you have and in loads of places. So let's now figure out why it's bringing in things from all locations. So if you go onto settings and the spotlight, Click on that. You see, it's got every single, every single category stick, including calculator. I mean, what are you going to be searching to bring up the calculator? Turn off the things that you probably don't want. And now what that's going to do is once you close that and search for the same thing, hopefully you would now be presented with a few stuff. The fifth one I want to show you is all about docking, right? So you know there's a dock bar at the bottom. 
so some of you might know you can also move the dog bar to the left or right but we just want to cover this again because there are a few things that you can do from day one to sort of clear some of the clutter so for example in my scenario here I've got photos app I might not need right click on that and say remove from dock so that completely goes away I don't really use FaceTime option remove from dock and that goes away so what I'm trying to do right now is I'm making space um, and removing apps that I've taken up the space and it looks a little bit of clutter but you can also do more things so again head over to the settings click on your desktop and dock and in here you can change the size so in case if it's interfering and you want to see more things you can always move the dock in and out although please remember if you're making your dock smaller you might also remove that shortcut option there because you can click on an empty field to go back to your desktop okay so now you can also use the magnification so magnification the higher you put it the higher it magnifies so even if you keep it really really small uh, you can magnify it um, big enough if you want to move it move the position to the left this is how you do it to the left and this is how you do to the right so for the purpose of this video we're going to stick to the bottom what i also wanted to show you is how you can automatically hide the taskbar to get some more space so if you just tick on that that hides a taskbar in order to bring the taskbar back up put your mouse there for a couple of seconds and it brings the taskbar back up the way how you can move apps is just click drag and move and that's the way you move the app the next one i want to show you is how you can maximize your screen sizes and multitask like a pro using the multi view let's say you find yourself where you got lots of windows like this so if you click on to that to maximize your window you will enter a full screen mode and now what you can do is you can actually move an app in here to create a another full screen and you can continue doing that or what you can do is you can create more desktop spaces so what this does is this is now going to free up some spaces for you and the best way to navigate is by using the three finger gesture on your trackpad so by three finger go swipe left and right and you can click you can quickly move between the full screen pages so what i also want to do is when you're in the full screen mode you can use multiple different desktop but you can also create a multi view so for example let's look at this google chrome window here so within this google chrome window i can just move the safari and i have a side by side view let's say i've got this calendar uh, and I'm looking at email in here and I've got a view of my email and my calendar in one place and then just just use the function to three finger to swipe across to move around like that number seven is by far the best feature ever existed you would have seen on my doc I've got Google Drive I've got BBC I've got Gmail so these are actually websites that I've converted into apps so what I've done is I've turned it into an app which looks like that so it, it opens in its own window and I can use it like any other app so the way how you do that is go to Chrome click on the three dots and then click the car save and then so click on the car save and share and then click on install pages app so when I do that what this is going to do is this is going to create an app that is that is now an app for Google Doc right click and go to options and say keep in dock so this is one way to make sure it stays in dock right and once it stays in dock you can always move it around and now this sits as an app and you can pretty much do that at any website right? so tip number eight bear with me there's not a lot to go only three more so what I want to show you in this is view menu when you click on customize toolbar what you actually get is you actually get a lot more options than what was available to you by default I want to open new folder all the time airdrop is a lot more useful for me I also want the delete function I also want the get info function right so if I go and click done what that's done is it's now created it's now created those shortcuts on the toolbar so I can click on something and then for example if I want to get info I don't need to right click anymore I just click on that and get the info and if you don't like that if you want to put it back to how it was click on this entire toolbar at the bottom replace it at the top and you're left with the default one and the ninth one it's going to blow your mind you can now create shortcuts for every single menus within each app think about any app that you're using on a day-to-day -day basis and think about that one function that you need the most and to see whether you have a shortcut built into the app for that so for example let's say when I am on Safari and I'm on a web page right I want to share that web page the sharing functionality is built into Safari so it's quite easy for me to airdrop 
straight away. But when I come onto Chrome, I cannot airdrop straight away. But when it comes to Chrome, I cannot actually do that. In Chrome, you can go onto the file menu and then share, and you can see there's airdrop. So what I've done is I've actually built a custom shortcut that triggers the airdrop every single time. So in this instance, what I built is I've got the option, command and A that triggers the airdrop. So option, command and A, for me, you see, that triggers airdrop all the time. Without, without that command, I have to be so finicky, go around, try to figure it. Now, no matter what page I am on, I just do that and then it goes into airdrop. Now, let me show you how you can build that. Hit settings and what you wanna find is you wanna find the keyboard because it's a keyboard shortcut that we are creating. And within the keyboard shortcuts, and you can see here, this is a keyboard switch shortcut. So if I click on that, it opens up quite a few options. So you've got options to create shortcuts based on a lot of these things on the Mac OS. What you wanna do is come to the app shortcuts. So in here, you can start building out your shortcut. So for reminders, I've got the due date at control D, and then in, in Chrome, I built the airdrop and pin tab. But what you can do is you can either create a new one or you can also get rid of uh, the existing one and override it. So for example, in this one, what I wanna show you is in here, you can actually do the grouping of the tab. What you have to pay attention to is the characters and yeah, and these are case sensitive. So when you're building these rules, remember the case sensitive of the word. Right, so come in here, so we want to group tab, so there's capital G, space in the middle, and capital T. So come in here, and I want to create one more for Chrome. So application, I want to come and use Google Chrome. And now input the menu, which is group tab as a menu. And the keyboard shortcut, I want to shift, command, and G. So that builds out my shortcut. So if I go OK, and now, Shift, Command, and G should now group my Google tab. Okay, guys, we're there. This is the last one, and this is gonna be a fun one. I don't wanna bore you. And this is, you can probably see this as like an Easter egg. Potentially, there is a, there is a button you can press that kind of gives you a Windows view on Mac, which I think is really, really cool. So for example, when you are on Launchpad to look for other apps, you have to actually click and then swipe left and right. Right, so then that happens all the time. But what you can actually do on Launchpad is if you right click, it gives you the listicle view. This reminds me of the Windows Start menu where everything is um, everything is sort of sorted A to Z. And this is probably the easiest way for you to look at all the apps that you want A to Z. And then also utilize the folder feature a lot more better. So if you utilize the folder feature and you don't know where the apps are being installed, this is the right way to do it. So that is it. If you do like what I've showed you, like and subscribe to the channel.